Thanks for staying with us. So let me just quickly welcome Manny. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Owa? I'm good, I'm How good. Are you ladies? We're well, All right, so World Braille Day on January 4th is celebrated to honor the birth of Braille's inventor, Louis Braille. Braille's gift to the world has brightened the lives of millions of people around the world who are blind or visually impaired, and they benefit from his work every day. The day also acknowledges those that um, um, acknowledges that those with visual impairment deserve the same standards of human rights as everyone else. The dates for the event as chosen by UNGA um, via proclamation marks Louis Burrell's birthday. We love to see people, of course, uh, coming together to celebrate events and good causes. And this World Braille Day um, that happens today is one of such events. And we are so, so happy who, uh, and glad for the blessing of, uh, what's his name? Braille. Louis Braille. Because yeah. I cannot even imagine how people that are visually impaired can cope without, you know, I mean, I've seen newscasters. I mean, when I was with um, TVC, there was a guy in um, radio. He's, he's blind, but he's able to read the news because of Braille's. Yeah, so wow. I mean, there are many of them. I also actually attended this Indomie Hero event. Mm -hmm. And I, I would love to bring that young boy. That boy is amazing. He developed an app that would help um, people that are blind um, hear. So even if they cannot see, they can they can hear what the lecturer is saying so he developed something that would mm. teach them different subjects and all of that so people are actually Ooh, you know yes yeah. people are actually doing great things and it's just you know just to continue to put a spotlight so yeah. i'm happy that this day exists and i'm, mm. I'm glad for I, I will take it from the angle of um you know it's a code braille is a code so mm. you the, those who are visually impaired they actually have to learn that code oh, to be able to actually read it and whoever um, braille um, the, the inventor, inventor. <laughs> the inventor he actually got went blind at the age of three mm. and invented it and he was a French teacher mm. Tisha <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's um I, I think it's a, it's a beautiful thing that he has been able to invent that and aid the visually impaired all over the world absolutely yes okay so let's move to our news <coughs> because we're running out of time else mm. let me start, let me come to you first <coughs> that's okay. coffee oh sorry sorry <laughs> i didn't <laughs> notice <laughs> okay i think i can sleep there anyway <coughs> okay so um this i'm 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 not violent today this year i'm, I'm turning a new leaf so <laughs> it's going to be um good news all the way i'm just going to reiterate what our governor has said governor baba jj solo um, so this is about Lagos Rail projects to be ready by the end of 2022. Um, and this project, when completed, the 37 kilometer red line rail project will link Agbado to Marina, while um, the 27.5 kilometer blue line will um, run from um, Okokumaiko to Marina. And I think if this is achieved, it's going to reduce the um, pressure we have on Lagos roads, right? And, Absolutely. And that's where we really want to get it, to get to that point where the traffic situation in Lagos is better. So um, I'm holding him by these words, and I'm hoping that by the fourth quarter, fourth quarter of um, 2022, we can commission that um, project, and there will be a bit of um, fun relief. in Lagos State. Relief. Yeah, relief the on word. the roads, my dear. Yes. So we, so need, we need real. See, in yeah. fact, uh, so I good luck to them. And kudos to them kudos as well. Kudos to them, yeah. I look forward to something like that on this Lake Express first way. You know, Honestly, I will not drive right again. Now, from Lagos to Ibadan. Mm. Mm. That has really, 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 really yes. of, Yeah, it has. so imagine if it we has. have something like that. So kudos to them. We're yeah. hoping that they truly deliver that project. So, All right, Isi, <laughs> I like your good news. No violence. <laughs> <laughs> Elsie has turned the new leaf. <laughs> I don't know for how long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is another good news. And, uh, you know, I... Like I said, I was just discovering Twitter when we had the ban, and yeah. uh, yes, it really hurt me. So whenever they say were anything, just discovering oh Twitter. yes, when the it was usage banned, yeah. of it. I don't even believe. You. Ah, <laughs> believe me, you. So um, my 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 news is on Twitter ban, mm -hmm. and whenever they they say anything about Twitter ban, I I my ears you know picks up, and what it says is Twitter misconditions Buhari awaits panel's report, and the president is awaiting the report before he now you know 
um, lift the ban. And, he, you know, this was done uh, on the 4th of June last year. So it, it will be a year on the 4th of June in 2022. So hopefully we won't have to wait till then before the ban is lifted. Let's be hopeful. And he says that... Um, Twitter meets one of the conditions that Twitter decided to meet. Let me actually just quickly run through the conditions been, that has been met by Twitter. And it is one, to open an office in Nigeria, two, have a country representat uh, represent representative, and uh, three, register with the corporate commissions, that's CAC in Nigeria, mm. and pay fair taxes. Whatever the fair taxes is, we do not know. Then. Uh, next is sensitive to national security and cohesion. It must not undermine the, nation, the nation's um, security. And finally, train Nigerians uh, in IT and you know strategic intelligence as okay. well. So, so let us wait and see. Of <laughs> course, there has been reactions on, on social <coughs> media, Instagram, for example, and they said uh, they should hold it that they're not interested in. Um, the tweets have been b that by the ban the, being lifted, the being lifted oh, really? by the president because they already have their VPN. So they, a lot of them are not I'm really interested. That VPN is not working. Let me come to you, money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes. my news not the same. is mm -hmm. about COVID-19. Yeah. Um, U.S. sets global record, mm -hmm. announces over 1 million COVID-19 cases mm -hmm. in a single day. Mm -hmm. Over a million so I'll read. It says the United States recorded more than 1 million COVID-19 cases mm. on Monday, according to data from John Hopkins University, as the mm. Omicron variant spread at a blistering pace. Mm. So jump to Fauci. I'm always interested mm. in Fauci. Okay, it comes, mm. it comes a day after top U.S. pandemic advisor Anthony Fauci said that the country was experiencing almost a vertical increase in COVID-19 cases, mm. adding the peak maybe only weeks away yeah. so um this is one million in a day a day mm. in in the u.s and in nigeria we have over six hundred thousand yeah so six hundred thousand cases sorry six hundred cases sorry six hundred so um do you think it's because we're not testing people of here? Of course, it's because we're not testing. <laughs> Do you know so, everyone that came down with a cold in December? <laughs> I know. Everybody I know. And then, you know, the Omicron, the symptoms are, you know, Common milder. Mm. Yeah, okay. so I think almost everybody in Nigeria actually had Omicron. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and we mm. were really dirty yes. in December. Uh, uh, let, me, let me quickly <laughs> tell my story because we ran out of time. Um, right. So mine is actually just uh, a quick one. I mean, we saw, I don't know if you guys, if you, you guys monitored what mm. happened in Magodo because that was where <gasps> I lived before I moved yeah. down here. So I actually know <laughs> what is happening. So um, a lot of people had come in. They said there was a court ruling where people came in mm. and um, said they were going to reclaim the uh, about Five hundred and forty-nine lands, or before hundred and fifty-nine lands, or whatever it was wow. the number. So they went into Magodo Estate with bulldozers. They wanted to go in with bulldozers and security personnel and lots of togs that went and marked over five hundred buildings. You know, they marked over the for demol yes wow. for reclamation. So this morning, actually, it actually went live this morning. The the Magodo residents protested, right, the planned demolition because th their claim is that since that particular time it happened, I remember the date now. There has been pr security presence. The security people that that follow the togs mm. and um like all the machineries and like equipments to destroy demolish people's buildings and these people are saying that you know what we have our co and all of that we went through the legal process to acquire our lands you cannot so there was a clarion call this morning for the governor of Lagos state to, to intercede yes to, to intervene, intervene in the matter and luckily for us before i mean we came on air the governor had intervened he came on to say that you know what they're they setting up a meeting day. for tomorrow they'll set up a meeting for tomorrow where the stakeholders the owners of these people that have given the rulings the people the magodo residents the representatives mm -hmm. the police personnel and all of that because they are saying that the police mm -hmm. personnel need to leave the estate because it is actually scary for them they have yes. guns and anything can happen agitations might happen anything can happen there might be loss of life so because i listened to the uh, what's it called the mra president that's the magodo resident association president today when he was talking so he's saying that let the security personnel leave the estate the because estate. it's actually for him he knows what police 
can do. I mean, we've seen issues of SSA and all Ensors, of that. So yeah. let them leave the estate. So thankfully, the governor went there and he did the address. So hopefully, we'll wait for to see what will happen. I was really hoping to get what your thought is when it comes to legalities of these claims. But you know what? We're going we'll to find a way. Yes. Um, because I, I was even going to ask. So um honestly i have the following needs like you have because mm. me, you have roots there so <laughs> <laughs> you are following it but when i saw the drama i had a conversation with someone to just get an idea of what it is mm. actually from the legal part yes and from what i hear please correct me if i'm wrong um there's actually a court ruling to this effect that Supreme allows yes. allows these people to take over those lands mm. and um i no, also so hear sorry i also hear mm. that the government um is offering to give the people in magodo a certain land no hold on that's what i hear <laughs> but the <laughs> land is no, not no, hold on that's, that's but, not true that's, okay but the no, land is not in a choice area mm. actually mm. so that is why they cannot and at the end of the day if this is going to be solved they have to buy back that land somehow because I don't know what the governor is going to say now, or if the governor is going to say something that is going to overrule what. Yes, yeah, so do you know how much it is to the buy a land in Magogo right darling, now? The governor is just going to it create is what it is. room for them to settle that and look. renegotiate. What yes. is that settlement, yeah. my dear? They have to renegotiate. They have to buy. And they have to, no, yeah, they, they have, have to buy. So for the owners, the the what's it called, the Shangisha owners? I think they the the oh, conversation I Shangisha. heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Shangisha landlords are the ones yeah. against whatever. Okay. They have the lands they have they have been allocated they didn't specify the exact location where they will compensate them mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i think the compensation where the land is com is located is actually very far it's not the it's people not that a, are it's residing not in Magodo. yes it's, it's not the, no choice yeah area. it's not the choice area but let us see how it goes it's a it's a very interesting conversation very because they collect land use charge they collect all those things yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. they're saying no, we're giving you land but when you're sending them to doesn't make sense let's take a break when we return from the break we're discussing it's still a state matter we're discussing security with us, we'll be right back.